Hey, 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 what's going on guys and girls? Chef PB, Troy, ATX RC Productions, Drone, Multi-Rotor, Reviews, Tips, Tricks, Unboxings on Facebook, everything on YouTube as ATR, ATX RC Productions, all that stuff. Um, check us out, but more importantly, check out everybody that we're talking about here, especially if you're looking for drone storage solutions, whether it be FPV or full-size consumer, even some DIY stuff technically could fit in a lot of these things. Um, I want to give a big shout out, first of all, first and foremost, to all of the people that have ever, the companies, the vendors, the individuals that have ever met with me, talked to me, or asked me to consult with them on reviewing any of their products. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. I One of the very first cases I ever received for review was from um, Frank Ferry at Carolina Drones. Now, his, his case is not here. It's been long gone. Um, I really didn't have much of a use for it at the time. Um, it was for my solo, and it was the exact same outer case, though, as this one here from Micro Raptor. The inner piece that was the foam pieces were a little different, um, and it's what makes a lot of different cases unique is the integration of how they cut and form the inside foam parts to conform to the copter is what the differences in most cases are really going to be. Um, there's a standard kind of size for carry-on, so that's always going to be a consideration. Um, every bag and case that I have here is a carry-on legal case. Some are much larger, and some people will argue with me that they're not, but I've taken each case of these carried on. Um, so that let's get that out of the way. I also have all these cases here just to show you that I have experienced quite a bit of different storage solutions, from hard shell cases to backpacks. Everything here I have tried, plus much more. I've had the Nooks. I've had Seahorse, which this is actually a Seahorse case. Um, I've had Condition 1, which I used to love and use. I still have some. I just don't use them. Um, I've used, obviously, Pelican. One of these cases is actually a Case Pro, which is one of the ones we're going to talk about, along with the Drone Guard. Both new products to market. Um, both very high quality. Skypack. Man, my man, Jeremy Schweitzer. This has to be, for now, currently, my most innovative case that I've ever seen um, completed and kind of conceived. Jeremy is a test pilot. And when I say test pilot, I mean he gets in there, straps himself into untested products, which I mean jets <laughs> and high performance planes and aircraft, and he gets in the sky and flies them. So he's a hired gun, but he came up with this, the sky pack. And I'm not gonna go into it, go check out my videos and all the other ones. It is an amazing bag. At first sight on the site though, for the price, I criticized it, and I sent him an email, and I said, man, there's no way you're going to sell these at that price. Give me a call. Let me help you out. Let me look at it. Let's talk about this. A year later, he came and saw me personally and showed me this bag in my hands, and I swallowed my shoe. I told him, I am very sorry that I ever said this thing did not look very high quality. It is far from it. This is military-grade stuff, high-quality stuff, and I talk about this high-end bag because it is a very high price point, but well worth it. It is a solution that I use for traveling with lots of copters. I can keep six copters in here in the FPV size. Um, five very easily, six if they're smaller. Um, three very comfortably with all my equipment, chargers, batteries, soldering iron, everything I can bring with me where I want to go. It is carry-on legal. It can also be checked and be pretty secure. In my video, I stand on it. Yes, you can stand on this thing. It is not a hard shell, but it can actually take someone standing on it by its design. So, don't let price dictate where you buy. No, I did not buy all of these cases, but I have spent a decent amount on cases in the past and on other ones. Um, do not waste your money on something that just some guy says is better than what you think is better for you. This solution, great for bringing everything to the track, even just up the road, or traveling on an airplane, a boat, wherever. FPV mainly, but you could put some RTS, and you could also, I put a Zero drone in there with three micro copter, uh, FPV copters, and I've seen other guys like Jeremy had his this team, team Black Sheep Discovery in there, so you can put bigger copters in there as well with a bunch of gear. Um, for around town, or if I'm just trying to skip over with one or two copters, like maybe my TBS Vendetta, the Micro Raptor Pro bag, or yes, you can get this bag somewhere else, but you're not going to get the custom fit foam, and the foam in here is what makes it. It's durable. I packed this thing in a suitcase, or in a big duffel, and actually checked it before and not been worried, because I know my gear is solidly in there. 
because of the hard kind of foam that they use in a pre-cut foam. It is also carry on legal. You might need to turn it sideways to get it in there, especially if you have copter strapped to it and it's full. But a great solution for grabbing it, throwing it in the back of my car and keeping it going around town. Or, again, traveling on an airplane, it works. So that's the FPV gear for the most part. Um, I will talk about quickly the PDR Solo backpack, the stock one. Look, it serves the purpose. It's also a big solid piece. It is barely carry-on legal, but you can still get it carried on because it will slide um, into the carry-on bin. You also might need to do it sideways just depending on how much um, other stuff is in that bin. But you off the table. We are going to talk about these cases, which is the Case Pro and the Low Pro BP450 AW. We're going to talk about those with the Phantom 4, but before that, I just want to talk again quickly about hard cases and differences and things that you need to consider. So I've got a mountain of backpacks falling over here. So, things to consider. Purge valves. The compression. When I say compression, I have hardly ever found a copter case that was not trying to squeeze as very much in as possible in a smallest amount of the smallest size case. And in doing so, it actually will compress your copter into the foam. I don't like that. For instance, with the solo cases, a lot of them compress the copter slightly, which the gimbal sits so low that it compresses the gimbal, I'm afraid. Um, do not like that. I have to use it though because most cases, again, are kind of shoving your copter in there. There are other cases just like this one that use the same shell but use different inside foam pieces. Um, always consider that. Like I said, Carolina Drones, Frank Ferry, great dude. There's been a conversation recently where we, we were talking about why you would buy from Frank and nowhere else, and there's plenty of reasons. One is he innovates all kinds of gear for the consumer market. He has, I have had a unique marketing director of high up tell me, Frank knows what the people want, he knows how to get it to them, and he gets it to us ready to give to them. He has literally given unique products and been like, my guys are buying this, you need to market it. And within months, Unique has it on the market. So he is always all about innovation, coming up with new solutions for the user, for the people. He helps people um, when some companies don't. And I'm not bashing Unique, I'm just using them as an example. I have seen him give somebody a brand new copter system that Unique told them they crashed because they didn't know what they were doing. Frank took in that copter, gave them a brand new one, and figured out what to do with it from there. That's the type of dude. He hooked me up with my first case. Very similar to this one because it was the same outer shell. However, the inside was definitely slightly different. And I'll use this as an example. This is my solo case. So this one is from Michael Raptor. Daniel and the guys at Fuerte, thank you. Um, this is one that it actually does not compress at all. It barely, almost touches and compresses, but it doesn't. Um, one of the reasons is the upper foam was redesigned and slimmed down to hold, not only hold props, but to be slimmer than the original seahorse case. That's where the compression came in with some of the other cases that use the seahorses. So I just wanted to use that as an example. Um, one more example would be, what is that? Oh, that's a nut. Uh, one more example would be the um, inner rubber seal. Always check the seals. What kind of seal is it? Is it a double seal? Is it a single seal? Is it a rubber seal or is it one of those kind of foam kind of porous seals? Um, always check on that and that's something you want to look at. And then purge valve. The only downside to this seahorse style case is there is no purge valve. What that means here in Texas is I throw this in my trunk and it gets to 110 in the trunk. None of that air really escapes so it starts to bow out. Um, it even actually doesn't like stickers on it because of that. So these stickers in the Texas heat this summer, if I throw it in my trunk, will actually start peeling up very easily. Well, it's silly, but that's just something to think about. Um, all stickers are really going to peel on a lot of materials, but some of these harder EVAs and kind of poly and um, different forms of glass and stuff, they actually will hold these stickers a little better um, because they'll initially kind of stick better too. So the Pelican case. Great case, just wanted to say it's very similar to the SDK that the Case Pro is going to be using, but um, no problems with it. My only, my only issue with the Pelican is the price. Um, Pelican cases are typically the highest of the high. Um, the SDK are right on that same level, 
Um, they typically are slightly less in price. So I think that's why Case Pro chose it is it's pretty much a very similar quality in the standard of the hinges, the mechanisms, all of that, but um, slightly better priced if you ask me and it's purpose built in this case. So I've used those, those are great. But today we're here to quickly talk about hopefully, and I know it's gonna take a while because we are gonna go through two cases, the Phantom 4. Two new solutions on the market. This one I believe is currently available. Again, the Drone Pro from Low Pro. It's a uh, BP450. This one over here is the Case Pro, and it is based off an SDK carry-on uh, style case, rolling case, and it fits both of them, the Phantom 4. This one is fresh to market. I don't even know if it's on the, on the market yet. I think this might be a pre-production model or basically first one that's production's hitting the floor now. Um, met both of the marketing directors and some of the guys that work with these guys at the Orlando Drone Dealers Expo. And in meeting them, we talked, I saw what they had. I was very excited about some of the stuff they'd had. Some of the stuff, I, I honestly, I, I critiqued some of their stuff right then and there. Um, as I would, you know, as I always do, right? Um, I'll give my opinion and then I gave them some solutions and some ideas that I think are good for the marketplace in FPV and in the consumer drone market. Case Pro has actually started apparently working on some of those ideas that I gave them, and I believe Low Pro possibly too. Um, Dan at, at Low Pro wanted to get into FPV racing, and I overheard them having conversations about wanting to get in locally. I explained how they could do that. Um, he got with me a few weeks later and said, hey, man, I really want to get in on FPV racing. Um, could you help me out getting set up? So I hooked him up with some people and some different vendors and where to get stuff, and guess what? He's up and flying and trying to fly FPV. He's also, I think, bought a, I could have swore he said he bought a Phantom 4 recently. So he's now using this case, and he sent me and Bill uh, both a backpack and some other goodies just in return for it, and I just want to say thank you to Dan, thank you to Low Pro. I have other videos I'm going to do with some of the other gear you guys got me, but this bag is new to market. It is a very high-quality bag. I've already used it, and I'm very, very excited to have it. Um, it will fit more copters than just the Phantom 4. It'll fit any Phantom series. Any of the new Autels will fit in one of these. Um, it will fit uh, probably a Zero Drone very easily. Any X-Frame in that same 350 size will fit in here. I do not know if it will fit solo. I believe it will, but it would probably take some, some funny configurations and kind of messing around, but I, I can't imagine it wouldn't. I will try it down the road, but not today. Case Pro, new to market. They are coming out with some new innovative ways to carry your stuff too. They are instead of trying to cram everything in the smallest space possible using kind of the form and function of the case already, they have created their own foam inserts inside and a new way of thinking about it, I believe, that I'm gonna find very exciting. They also offer personalization. You will see when I open this thing up, it will have a card in it. Every case and bag they sell will have a card. In that card, you go to the website, you fill it all out, and they will send you your own label to go over the Case Pro label that will say it's yours. So I just think that's really cool. To start, though, let's look at our P4. It is already provided DJI case, which is actually amazing for a ready-to-fly. I think... The current only other case that I would say is better than this out the box um, would be the Autel. And Autel is coming up hard, guys. You guys take a look at those things. Carolina Drones, Frank Ferry is selling them, man. Um, those things come with a, a really nice case. And those copters are very interesting. So take a look at those Carolina Drones with a Z, no E. Here's our P4. Open up this case. Card, like I said. Who said you can't have it your way? Check out online with the design tool and you can literally customize some of these kits yourself if you want, but you also fill this out. Let's see, fill out the form for your free label. So you go to their website, fill it out, they'll send you your free label for your case. First thing opening up, you'll see it has a little plastic holding case that you could put some of the little cables like the OTG or even your firewires and your USBs. Um, you could probably put some polar lenses in there if you use them. The other thing you should note on first opening is the upper portion is 3D, has a 3D foam design in it. So these are all 3D kind of shaped to fit everything. And what that's going to do is, remember I said squeezing the copter or compressing it? Watch how this sits. And I, and I know this just because I saw it demoed. I haven't even put my copter in it yet. So... Copter, device, 
Mine's just an iPad, slips right in. Batteries, we'll put in first. One, two, three, four, technically. You could probably stuff one in the bird if you wanted. Radio simply goes in, obviously, where it's easily seen the shape goes. I do need my cable attached just because it's much easier. Wrap it around. Just drop the end in so it doesn't get crushed. Props go over here on this side. So you'll see now we've got props, radio, batteries. My cable, my charger. So it looks like the charger would best fit there with the cable kind of rolled up and I'm not doing it the best, but rolled up and squished in. There you go. This cable could probably just go right there in front of it. Yep. So now you have charger, the cable attached, and then the front cable that comes off. All right. So we've got everything there in there. It's bird time. Now, not all um, cases come with a specific direction that you put the copter in. In this DJI case, it does. It actually does have a space that you only put the gimbal forward kind of towards the bottom. On this one, I'm going to put that in there for a second. You will notice there is a, and I, it's probably hard to see, there's a 3D cut foam piece. It's like right, I don't know if you can see that. It's right here. So the gimbal is going to face that way. And what's really great is this actually protects. It doesn't touch, but it protects the gimbal from being pushed back any more than currently it is. So it rests right in front of it. And if you were to, for some reason, get pushed back, the gimbal would not be broken up. So it fits. And you'll see there's about a, quarter inch or so between the gimbal and that foam so it's nice but this is the thing that i think is awesome this is the reason why this case and you'll see these 3d uh, upper foam pieces now to me is so awesome look how it doesn't it's not snug it moves i mean it's jiggling right you're like oh no it's not going to stay there it will stay there the reason why is these foam pieces will hold it in place and instead of compressing the copter, I mean, look, I can actually put my fingers under the LEDs. Instead of compressing it, it just literally lets it fit. Done. I'm not hearing anything but the props slightly because there's only four. It's all there, guys. It's legit. I didn't feel the copter wiggling in there, like the weight wasn't moving around. Um, this foam piece here seals pretty much up here. This keeps the batteries kind of, I mean, it, smart. Case Pro knows what they're doing here. There's still plenty of spots for other gear. There's three more larger holes. There's another set of holes, or another set of holders here for SDs or something. Um, this is a smart, smart case, man. Uh, it's really nice and clean and smooth. It is, it's definitely hard. The handle on the top, rubber, skinny, nice and good, fits your hand. The back handle slides up with just the press of a button, much like other ones, but with its own kind of feature for how to unlock and lock it. The back is nice and hard and flat. Side handle is nice and big, but it's also skinny and it, it fits your hand and has a nice rubber seal. The lock here, two of them, metal sheathed, covered, so where you can't just like cut through the plastic or melt it. Again, the double the double latch hinge right here with a little bit of a safety latch, so it double clicks. It, it's a nice case. It really is. It's very simple and clean. And for me, the smartest hard case design currently on the market for any copter. Um, I, the fact that they went their own way. Design that upper foam to really hold it in there. Not try to squeeze so much in there. It fits it very well. I'm very, very excited to have that case. That is going to be my go-to roller for the Phantom. That being said, low pro, man, hitting it out the park with a backpack. It is a very high quality backpack and is very well worth every penny. I would buy one myself. We started to buy two of them for me and my boss before we got these from low pro. Um, they are awesome. You see me, I'm beating on it. It's hard shell. This, though, is actually a very large storage compartment that I'm beating on. I'm beating on it. There's no copy in there, but I'll beat on it after. Watch. 
So, exterior-wise, it is a very durable-looking, very tight-knit weave canvas. It also has some sort of kind of EVA shell with kind of a neoprene. I don't know what the cover is. I don't know, but it, it is good. It takes up beating. It has been beat around. It's been on two airplane trips already. Um, it's also got these kind of ghosted rubber eyes. I don't know if they're supposed to keep it from slipping or not on a slick surface, but they look cool. They're, you can see the stripes, right? Low Pro has a really solid metal plate on it. I, I wish it actually could be customizable like Case Pro, but, we, you know, not everybody does that. The wheel of it, super awesome foam, breathable. I mean, you can see it's very breathable, very thick foam, um, very, very comfortable. Waistband. Very, you know, padded, all that stuff. Compression strap with a little bit of give to one side. The front, um, oh, by the way, the compression strap, another cool design. Can actually, and I don't know if you can see that, but it actually can slide. It's got like this little groove. It's not a zipper. It's just the way it sits on this like groove. It's up and down. It's got other holding kind of carabiner hooks and such. Very, very high quality. I do not feel like I would rip them off. I mean, I'm pulling on those. Good to go. The loopholes are like a uh, kind of like a carabiner or kind of like the um, um, leash for like a camera. It's kind of like they use that same, you know, their camera company and stuff. Or they make, you know, storage containers for camera companies also. Uh, so it's got these cool loopholes that you can pull with your fingers. They're nice and big. And honestly, probably some of the best loophole things I've seen. Uh, all that being said, it is not weatherproof. It's weatherproof for the most part, but it's all weatherproof with. Something most low pro cases come with. There you go, all weather in the bottom, quick and easy, throw it on. It's got some other hooks and stuff and loops to do some different things with. Uh, side straps here under this thing, they got some more carabiner hooks, you can hook all kinds of stuff to. Another cool little racy stripe. Inside here is a flat pocket, you can stash stuff in if you needed to. There you go, cables or whatever. Other side, same symmetrical design with the strap holes and our loop holes. But inside this pocket, you've got a hook to put keys. You can put little pouches. they got little pouches in here. You can put your wallet. Let's see if I can show you that it's hard to open. You can put your wallet and stuff like that. So that would be a good size for that. Up top, open up the hard shell up top. You could put your tablet or you could put even like a 9-inch laptop. I put my sunglasses and all my, you know, goodies and my headphones and stuff in here, though, when I travel. So that's where I keep that. It's a hard shell. It does actually have an opening that you can open to access the main compartment. It's all Velcroed around three sides. I'm not going to open it, though. It's kind of a pain, and it's not going to look good on camera. So there's that. Little trick. When you go to use the bag, take the, the arm straps and just flip them. They sit perfect, just like that, flapped open. And that allows you to get to the zippers, because this is a rear hatch bag, which is honestly the best way I like these bags to open is rear hatch-wise. It's just, the, it makes the most sense. So, open it up. You'll see I do have props in there, because I have been using them. These are my spare props. So it holds eight props across the top. And as a mesh zipper pouch, you can see this, I got a, a screwdriver and my OTG cable. Over here, it's customizable. It does look a lot like their drone guard, which, to be honest, is not my favorite case at all. I've seen one. In fact, we have one at the office. I, I think it's horribly designed for what it just doesn't hold things in the way you want. But um, it is very similar in the fact that it has some of the same pieces, but this is not the same. This is not the drone guard, okay? Uh, but it is a drone guard AP, BP450, but not the original. So these cases here come out. We'll take them out. Dividers come out. In this case comes out. It's all this felt kind of can use any kind of Velcro really could stick to. All that. It's got a zipper pouch up here for your tablet, which is padded on the front. On this side it's padded, and on the back side it's padded for the EVA side. So what we'll do is we'll take the copter out. Now, this bag is configurable however you want. For me, I've been doing this a very certain way. Remember the gimbal, the way that we wanted it protected here? Well, over here, there's no way to protect the back. But there's a way to keep it from being pushed back. And for me, that is positioning the copter in the very center, right there. But before you do anything, you get the 
larger of the pouches, so they're two different sizes, you can kind of see. The larger one is a little bit rounder at the front and not quite as pointy, but what you want is, you actually want the small one. So the small one is a little pointier, but it's skinnier, and the back is really flat. So I'm going to push the back up all the way against the back of the, the bottom of the bag. So now, take the copter out, that bag is literally the, all the way on the bottom. And the reason I do that is, I'm then going to take this one, and I'm going to put it at the top, but not at the very top. I don't want to squish where the iPad goes in. I want to set it literally just in front of the iPad. So now I've got this. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take the copter, gimbal towards the bottom of the bag where we put the small case, and it goes in just like that. Now when you look, you want to move this just a little more if you have to. You want to slide this back. There we go. Now when you look in there, and I can't show you yet, the gimbal sits right in front of where the radio is going to be in this front small bag. So that small bag, you now drop your radio in, and now you can feel that there's no pressure from the radio to the copter to the, or to the gimbal. It, is a, it does touch the top of the copter, which is fine. That's what's going to kind of press the copter in there. But we're going to now take side pieces. So these side pieces have a, right here, the piece of um, Velcro. That's going to go towards the outside, and we're going to use these and position them to where these are going to hold the copter a little more firmly in place where we want it. And the other one, this strap actually comes off, has a strap that will strap across to match from one to the other. There we go. So now... Copter is legit. It's in there, right? I mean, it's secure. The gimbal is not being pressed. I can actually see that it's not. It's not being pressed. So we're good. So I can zip up the radio side. On this side, you'll see that I have it configured with three slots, and that's because I currently am only running two of my four batteries. So I've got two batteries. And then I've got the charger. If I wanted, I could actually put more batteries in here, and I could put the charger in the in this portion. But instead, for right now, it's just really holding the extra cable. And then that one's ready to zip up. Now, the only part left out of our case pro to put up is tablet and props. So we'll kick the pro down. So tablet in that front pouch. I like to put it screen towards the hard shell just because I just feel like it's safer that way. We'll put the rest of the props in. They go in and then through the first one and then into the pocket. There we go. So we now have everything is in the bag. Ready to go. Told you I'd bang on it, right? It's legit. There we go. Put it on. And it sits nice on the back. It's perfect. It's a great bag. So there you go. It is definitely carry on. I've uh, carried it twice on airplanes. Local Case Pro. All the rest. Thank you to everybody for watching. Thank you to the support from the vendors, the manufacturers. Fly safe, fly smart, fly Chef PV, fly Case Pro, fly Low Pro, fly Sky Pack, fly Micro Raptor, just fly, guys. Just fly. Peace.